clear. Oo. Oh, oh. Ito lang ikaw na babay, ha? Yes, yes, sir. Live na to. So good evening everyone. We are live on Facebook and we are just we are waiting for our lecturer from Niner 9.0. Can you give me a sec? I will. Mm -hmm. uh, Sorry, sorry, let me feed ba. Hi everyone. Hi, hi Anna. Hi Apple. Are you Jello? Asani. Hi. Oh, um, Sir Fris is here. Hi. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Yes. Hi. Good evening to everyone. Good evening, Ethel. Hello. Okay. Um. Let's start na po ba? Or let's wait. For. Uh, sugo. Kasi time one my clock is eight fifty seven. Sugo. We can start exactly at nine nine o'clock. Okay. Okay. Sure, sir, Fries. Thank you. Thank you po. Ma'am Anna, hi. Ma'am Apple, Ma'am Arjalo. Ma'am Grace. Sino kaya tong iPhone na to? Hi, Ma'am iPhone or Sir iPhone. Jer uh, Ma'am Jorena, La Army, Mitch, Michelle, Ray, Ron, Ma'am Vanessa, and Ma'am or Sir S. So welcome to IFNG. Ah, uh, hello Ethel. Isend ko na lang oh. din yung ano, yung PowerPoint presentation ko na copy sa kanila. So sinend ko siya sa chat box uh, in case okay. they might be interested in ano, downloading a copy. Ayan. Thank you for that, Sir Fritz. All right. So for all the participants, um we have this Google form posted in the chat box so you can copy or you can save it on your gadgets. Everyone, gising pa ba kayo? Please send um a heart um a heart shape on our chat box.
Thank you, Sir Arjula and Mom Jorena. Hi, Sir Fritz. Hello. Hello. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. To we are live on Facebook, and um, I am Ethel, the new administ one of the. Uh, I I'm the new administrator of IFNG, and I just recently passed the IELTS exam last month. So it's my panata to be, yeah, it's my panata to be one of the administrator uh, if ever I pass the exam and this is it. So surface let us start now. Sorry, this is my first time. So please bear with me. Oh my God. It's okay. <laughs> and yeah, so okay, thank so you let's for, start. yeah. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, good evening sa mga nasa Pilipinas and good morning sa mga nasa ibang bansa or good afternoon ba. So, since it's my first time, please bear with me. And I would, uh, it's a great pleasure and honor to introduce our guest speaker for tonight, our lecturer, one of the brains of Niner 9.0. Review Center, and he will talk about IELTS reading lecture skills, um, scheming and scamming. So let us all welcome and give a virtual applause to Sir Fritz Nolasco. All right, thank you, Ethel, for that generous um, introduction. And yeah, so congratulations for passing the IELTS uh, last month. And thank you for you know for contributing to 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 you know to our fellow Filipino nurses then uh, by yes. being an admin for this. Okay, so thank you. So thank good evening you. as well to everyone uh, attending the session. Of course, if you're in the Philippines, good evening. And those in the Middle East, so good afternoon, good morning to each one of you. You. And just like what Ethel said, uh, I will be discussing with you, uh, well, in particular, reading testing topic natin ngayon. And I'd like to focus on two things. No? So uh, before I proceed, I just want to just switch to screen mode first para makita nyo yung aking screen. And um, yeah, so share my PowerPoint then. Okay, so I will also be sharing to you guys a copy of my PowerPoint. Uh, just give me one moment. Ayan. So I'll be sharing to you, to those attending the, yeah, the Facebook Live. So good evening to everyone attending the Facebook Live uh, session. Uh, just give me one moment, guys. I'll just have to pull out the link for today's handout or today's material. Okay. Right, so guys, those attending the Facebook Live, you can refer to our chat box. Um, I shared with you the link for today's handout then. So whatever I'll be flashing on my screen, so it, it you'd have a copy of your own by simply clicking clicking on that link then. I recommend you download a copy then for your reference. No, Even if you go offline, at least you'd be able to access the topics that we'll be covering for today's session. So anyway, uh, as seen here on my screen, I'm just going to focus on two things, no, yung scanning and skimming. So I was when I was preparing for this uh, presentation for this evening, I was thinking to myself that possibly I can, you know, I can wrap things up. I can finish the the lecture for tonight in just a very short amount of time. No, because there's really not much to say regarding these two techniques. But what I intend to share to you now are some sample questions on how we can apply this scanning and skimming, uh, introduce to you an overview of the reading tests, and of course, what's the concept behind scanning and skimming? No? So why do we uh, why, why do we recommend the students to use this instead of like reading the entire passage? Okay, so I'll, I just have to move on to the next slide first. So guys, I just want to briefly introduce myself first uh, for those, of course, uh, you know, uh, non-Niner review students attending today's session. So my name is Fritz. So I'm one of the lecturers um, of 9.0 Niner. So uh, some educational background first. So I studied at Ateneo de Manila University with a bachelor degree in management information system. So it's an IT course then. And um, 
I, I do have, well, well, I juggle between two jobs. So apart from working as a, working as a lecturer at Niner, um, I also do consultant consultancy work uh, for a private company here in Quezon City then. And I handle learning and development. So basically, I facilitate and develop training modules for them uh, for communication courses and as well as behavioral programs. Then, um, yeah, so I am also ahead of the uh, 9.0 Niner content development team. So if uh, you're familiar with the dashboard that we have on our application on our 9.0 Niner app, so the materials that we have there for the grammar lectures, for the for the listening and reading for the mock exams. So I'm the one who is responsible for making sure that you know uh, things are working on for the content. And uh, recently, I authored a book, uh, which is, of course, available at Shopee. So I, I will be sharing to you later the title of the book then. So it's a grammar book. And in a month's time, we'll also be releasing another book, which I also authored, uh, which is focused on vocab book, uh, vocab, vocabulary. So in total, I've been with Niner since it started back in 2007. So in total, I have around 15 years of, uh, well, working experience or teaching experience um, as a an IELTS instructor. Okay, so guys, I just want to allow me to before we proceed with the topic, I just want to briefly introduce to you this book. No, to just to briefly promote. So, uh, this is Grammar Essentials, a practical guide to everyday English, and I recommend this book to those among you listening to me right now who feels the need that they still need to work on their grammar skills. Diba? So if, if you have some uh, weaknesses when it comes to constructing sentences, to uh, following subject-verb agreement, for instance, so th those common topics uh, that we tackle sa grammar classes natin. So it's available uh, through this book. No? So it's entitled Grammar Essentials, A Practical Guide to Everyday English. So um, it's a book which I also recommend to your friends if in case they just simply want to polish their English skills. Uh, may they be a professional or even like a student. And this costs 649 pesos. So it's available at Shopee then. And it includes 240 pages of grammar lessons. And once you avail this book, it comes with a QR code where you get to uh, scan it. And you'd be able to access the grammar lectures that we have on our 9.0 Niner app. No, so it's a, you have a free three-month access. And those among you who are non uh, new for new enrollees, you get to have a 500 peso discount on our review packages as long as, of course, you avail the uh, the well the book. No, so uh, the link I also included it in there sa ating uh, PowerPoint presentation. So you just simply click on that link then. Right. And uh, if in case, I'll just have to share the link as well for those among you who might be interested in purchasing this book then. Okay, so just give me one moment, guys. I'll just have to uh, pull out the link first. All right. And send it to you via our Facebook uh, chat box. Okay, so there. So I just posted it in there. Okay, so guys, that's it. So uh, I'll start with the main agenda for today's session then. No? And as we see here on my screen, um, I just want to just share with you a few important tips before I move on to scanning and skimming. Um, allow me to just uh, talk about the following items I have on my screen. So uh, the reading test, guys, this is one of the sub-tests that you will have to go through if you're taking the IELTS test. No? Um, IELTS, of course, for those not familiar, um, they rep they, the, the initials represent, of course, the, uh, the, the words that the title stand for. That's International English Language Testing System. So it's, what, it's the widely uh, accepted English, um, uh, English test um, that would recognize a person, whether is he able to speak the language, the English language then. And that would be a, you know, well, a measurement of listening, reading, writing, and speaking. And with regard to the writing portion of the 
IELTS test, guys, you'll be given one hour to accomplish 40 questions, okay? And, uh, well, there are two modules, two major modules uh, for the IELTS test. So either you'll be taking the academic module, and this applies to those among you who applies, who, who intends to apply for a job, as a nurse or as a, any healthcare professional abroad, or if in case uh, you know you'll be you wish to study abroad, for instance, so normally they would take the academic module. Or if in case you will just apply for you know for a, for an immigrant visa, for example, for Canada, or if in case you'll be working as a gen of a skilled worker, then it might be applicable for you to take the general training instead. No, so dalawa yun, no? and um, the difference between the two. The questions for the academic module, they're more challenging. No? So um, they're, they're more difficult. The passages are longer, although you only have around three passages to, uh, to, to, to read. No? In contrast to general training, normally the passages are shorter. Uh, the questions are easier and more straightforward, uh, although the number of passages that you'll have to uh, read would account for just four to two, four to five passengers. So, medyo mas madami siya. Okay, so I always reiterate to my students, so whenever I conduct reading lectures to our students online, that the, the reading portion of the test, it, it's a test of comprehension, right? So, th that's the ultimate uh, purpose of the reading test. Eh? It, is, it is to measure the comprehension level of the exam taker. Diba? So when you say comprehension, your ability to understand written English, right? So you, our ability to understand sentences, English sentences, then, no? and make sure that we answer the questions correctly. And comprehension, guys, um, is the, the key to good comprehension lies into two important details no? or two important ingredients. So the first is vocabulary range. So meaning to say, those people who have wide range of vocab, no? so for halimbawa, if you're, if, you're, if you're fond of reading books, pocket books, or if you're reading, you love to read articles, for instance, diba? so that gives you a better chance of passing the IELTS test for the reason that you, know, you have wider range of vocab. If you encounter a certain word, then you'd be able to understand you know, what the sentence says more or less. Diba? So that's vocab. No? And another is our ability to understand sentences in English, no? yung, grammat yung grammatical range. Natin. Kasi what I notice for some people, they tend to misinterpret the sentence that they read. Um, they're thinking of it. In the in in the in the idea of a Filipino sentence, no. But the problem in there, guys, no. The, the the problem with being bilingual is that we tend to apply the how sentences in Filipinos are constructed, diba? Sometimes we literally translate from Filipino to English, then, and we're assuming it's the same uh, thought if we literally translate it. But again, that we we can't. We can't just simply depend on literal translation. Because there are certain sentences in Filipinos which uh, how hard you can try is that it's not possible for you to literally translate word per word. Diba? So that's why we translate not the word per se, but we actually translate the thought, the idea behind it instead. Okay. So I just want to impart to you this portion, no, yung vocab, the importance of vocabulary and of course grammatical range. So the beauty, if you'll be uh, if you are interested no, in applying for or registering for a, as a student here at Niner. So the beauty of our curriculum, guys, is that we offer a lot of vocab classes and vocab exams. No? So in total, we have around three vocabulary lectures, and we, that we do have two, uh, sorry, three as well, no? so three vocabulary exams. Then for grammar, we do have around seven, or not seven, eight, right? eight grammar lectures, then we have three grammar exams then. So we have live lectures that we offer and our schedule, of course, it runs from Monday to Sunday. And um, if in case you won't be able to attend the live lectures, we also offer dash, we also offer recorded lectures on the dashboard. So you can access it anytime you wish then. 
di ba? So yun, no? So I just want to uh, highlight that because I think for reading, you really have to make sure that you have good vocab and good grammar, most especially if you need to get a pretty good score. And we talk about pretty good score. If you need to get seven, for example, uh, 7.0, this means that we only afford some 10 mistakes. Meaning to say out of the 40 questions, then we'll have to accomplish at least 30 points out of the 40 or even higher. Okay, so I'll just have to move on to the next portion now for my screen. So let me just move on to the next part. All right, so let me just erase the marks I have on my screen. So guys, we're going to move on to the first topic for this evening session then. And um, as written here, it, we, we talk about scanning. No? So the idea, no? so what would be the idea for, for scanning? Now, the idea for scanning, guys, is that um, we, we don't recommend the students to read the passage, the, the entire passage itself, no? um, because remember, it's time constrained. You only afford 20 minutes to read the passage, one passage, and answer some 13 or 14 questions. No? And not everyone is a fast reader. No? So may mga iba sa atin, uh, mabagal mag, mag, magbasa. No? And that's the primary reason why we do not recommend the students to uh, read the passages. Then, no? it, it could waste a lot of time if you do that. No? Kasi the problem in there is that if you're going to read the entire passage, then go to the question. Eh, pagbalik mo, pagpunta mo sa question, you need to go back again to the passage to look for it. Diba? So, isipin mo, saan ko nga ba nakita to? Diba? Tapos ganun din no? with the next question and so on and so forth. So, what we recommend the students really is to go straight to the question first because after all, that's the basis of you, uh, you know, being evaluated is by by addressing whether the, the you you get the answer correctly for a question or not. So we recommend you go straight to the question. You try to read the question first, right, and try to identify keywords. So on the paper delivered test, you can encircle, you can underline words on the paper or on the questionnaire, or if you're taking the computer delivered test, then you can also use the highlighting function. No? Um, you know, that would give you a, you know, a better understanding, at least what are you looking for. So once you've identified those keywords on the question, then that's when you get to apply the scanning technique. So Basically, scanning, it's like I, I try to imagine that as if like, you know, you have a finger, you, you're using your fingertip and you're moving your fingertip from left to right, left to right, for instance. So we, we don't really need to read the entire paragraph or the entire passage, but by simply scanning, meaning to say that you're searching for the word. So for example, if the question says 1890, diba? so yung question na kalagay, yung year na 1890, so what we're supposed to do is to go to the passage and look for 1890. We don't need to read the passage or read the paragraph for us to search for 1890. So that's exactly the idea for scanning. Okay, so guys, let's try to apply scanning technique then. No? And um, before I proceed on and asking you to answer the questions I have on my screen, um, I just want to just share with you various types of questions that you might possibly encounter on the test. No? So for instance, you might possibly encounter fill in the blanks, which is one of the most common types of questions. Um, sometimes you'll encounter multiple choice as well. Sometimes it's true, false, not given. No? So yung, uh, you, you determine whether a statement is true, false, or not given. Then uh, there are also matching headings. When we say matching headings, para siyang matching type. Uh, the paragraph normally for the IELTS reading test, uh, they, they are identified with a, with, a, with a Roman numeral or with a letter. And you'll have to identify what, what would be the best title of a certain paragraph based upon the list of titles provided or list of headings. Ayan. So I just want to introduce to you uh, these various types of questions, no? common questions that are asked. So Guys, let's proceed on with answering some questions. No? So yung, yung klaten ngayon is I, 
I will need to read and uh, to, to answer some questions. So let's start with the first two questions then. No? And in particular, sige, isahin, isa, isahin na lang muna natin sila. And I want you to look into question number two. Yeah, so here is question number two. No? And guys, I'll give you, siguro, let's try to finish it, siguro. Um, I'll give you mga two minutes if we can do it in two minutes time. Because on the exam, uh, we only afford one and a half minutes actually. No, I mean, if you have to finish 40 questions within one hour, that's around one and a half minutes to, uh, to spend for each question. So guys, I'll give you two minutes to look into question number two. Then later, um, then later, I'll be asking you to share to our chat box yung sagot ninyo dito sa question number two. Okay? So, yeah. So, I'll give you two minutes. Then we can discuss the answer. Okay. All right. So, yeah. so, guys, I hope that's enough time for you to figure out the answer for question number two. So, you can now send in, you can type in sa ating chat box yung sagot ninyo sa question number two. Right. So, yes, let's just wait for you guys to send in your answers. Yeah. So, let me look into. Yeah. So, let. Um, so, dito sa ating Zoom meeting. Okay. So Melody said, then Elite uh, Christine Nasino also answered. Arjelo answered the same thing. How about those at then sa ating chat sa ano sa Facebook, right? So El Pabilona says competition. Uh, CJ says competition. Okay. Okay. Same goes with Glad and Lorraine as well. Okay. So guys. Uh, before we reveal the answer, no. So most of you agreed that the answer is competition. So for us to uh, to identify the uh, the answer, let's look into uh, the keywords, de ba? So punta tayo sa question. So according to the question, it says uh, it says there local producers uh, face blank from overseas. Diba? So if there are keywords in there, so this would be probably the word local producers and the statement overseas. Diba? So uh, so if we're going to understand the context, context, the question is asking, what is the local producers facing? And this, whatever it is, is coming from overseas. Diba? So yun yung, yun yung understanding natin ng question. So what we're going to do is to identify or to scan. No? So we go to the passage now and try to scan uh, if we see something that mentions local producers or overseas. So from my scanning process, uh, if you guys look into the second line, 
it was mentioned there, no? So sabi niya dito, local producers, it says, no? And with the word overseas, I don't see the word overseas because sometimes, guys, um, they, in, the, in the reading test, they won't, don't expect them to give you the exact words all the time. So you, you'll have to pay attention to related words, to synonyms. When you say synonyms, these are words that would share the same meaning. And in this case, the word overseas was being suggested yeah, was being suggested as as you can see here, no, sinabi niya, importation. And when you say importation, this means that, ah, okay, some products came from overseas, right? And it says here, Middle East and India as well. So we understand that probably it was talking about uh, overseas when it mentioned from the Middle East and India. So now that you've identified those keywords within a certain area of the passage, this gives you a hint that your answer to question, the, the first question I asked you to look at could be found somewhere within those sentences where we identified those, um, those, those keywords. Diba? So you, you try to imagine, it, it saves you a lot of time. Diba? Kasi you don't need to read the entire paragraph for you to answer question number two. All you need to do is to apply scanning. The idea is you select keywords on the question which will help you identify which portion of the paragraph are you supposed to focus on. And in this case, since I underlined those keywords, this gives me an idea that probably the answer to, the, to, the, to this question is found within that paragraph or within, that, within these two sentences. So this time, let's read it. So it says, the demand for cotton textiles had been growing since the Middle Ages, fostered, for, fostered by the importation of high-quality cotton fabrics from the Middle East and India. So how were local producers to fight off? So I see here, it says fight off. So it, this gives me an idea that when he mentioned fight off, isn't that supposed to be a close synonym for the word face? Diba? So, ano yung haharapin nila? What, what are they going to fight off? And the answer there, of course, is competition. Okay? So, you got this one right. So, for those of you uh, who write down their answer there, so the answer there is competition. Okay? All right. So, guys, let's move on to the next portion. So, I'm not really sure if you already took time to um, answer question number three, right? But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Can, you, can, can someone type in? What do you think would be the answer for question number three? Yeah, if you guys already have seen the answer for this number. So question number three. Right, so yeah, let's just wait for uh, others to type in their answer. Okay. All right. So it says there were expensive. Okay. Substitutes according to Debbie. Okay. Okay. All right. So some said substitute, some said band. No. So um, I just want to clarify one thing about it. No, because I I, 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 I cut the portions of the text or of the passage para mapagkasya ko lahat dito. But at any rate, um, I'll just give you another clue. No. So the, the statements might be misleading then. Uh, so I, I just want to point out or to clarify a few things here. So um, th this, this is actually describing the reasons. Diba? I mean, if you look into the, the, the actual passage, uh, just give me one moment. Uh, I'll just look for it first. Okay. So if you look into the the to the to the actual question, you no, know, where I got this one from, no, because medyo hindi clear kasi yun eh, and I I noticed that some of you got the answer incorrectly, but at any rate, um, it was talking about. Uh, just give me one moment, ah, it's not loading eh. Yeah, so it, it was talking about textile manufacture. So guys, with this statement, no, I, I just have to go back here. 
um, the statement says imported fabrics. So I have to look for imported fabrics then. Diba? So then natin, sige, let me just try to highlight this portion first. No? So imported fabrics. No? And it says there, imported fabrics blank. So what happened to imported fabrics? I mean, if you look into the next statement, it says mixed cottons produced. So if the mixed cottons produced, that's what happened to the mixed cotton. They were produced. So whatever happened to imported fabrics? Diba? So th that gives me a clue as to where. So for those among you who answered um, expensive, diba? and some of you even answered were expensive. No? So guys, um, I just want to point out uh, parallelism. So th this is just to point out the tone. No? So guys, if you answered expensive, for example, for this blank, it would actually make more grammatical sense to say expensive imported fabrics. I repeat, if the answer is expensive, then it should have been more grammatically correct if the blank could have been placed right before imported fabrics. Diba? So for example, expensive imported fabrics, that, that's actually grammatically correct. Right? But if we say imported fabrics expensive, it, it's not really grammatically correct. Um, the statement were expensive. You know? So for among you who answered were expensive, I mean, it actually makes more sense to say we're expensive. But the problem in there, guys, is that it's parallelism. Meaning to say, kung ito, kung yung mixed cottons produce, no, ang ginamit niya is past participle, you're expecting something that would also be a past participle form for imported fabrics. So we cannot answer where expensive because if you guys look into mixed cottons, ang nakalagay naman produce. Hindi naman nakalagay were produced. Eh. Diba? So you have to look for something that will be the same pattern with the clue given to us on the second portion. So anyway... Let, let's let's move into the passage then. No? And if you guys look into the passage, no? so alisin ko lang yung aking chat box ha? so dito. All right. So guys, if you look into the passage now, um, makikita nyo yung sagot, no? yung imported fabrics, you'd be able to see it somewhere in the middle portion. Now, the exact word is not given. The exact word is given. So don't expect to... To, to read imported fabrics, but you can actually tell from the statement foreign textiles that this is what it was referring to, right? When you say imported fabrics, you know that this is foreign textiles, isn't it? Diba? So in this case, it says they also had foreign textiles banned in that case. So in this case, for those among you who answered banned as the answer, then that's actually the correct one. Okay, so that's it. So what we did there, guys, is scanning. We simply searched for imported fabrics and we saw foreign textiles in there. So just like what we said, don't expect them to give you the exact word. You have to pay attention to synonyms. You have to pay attention to words that might possibly relate to it. And from there, you'd be able to look into where the answer is within that sentence. Okay, so I'll have to move on to the next passage now or next page. Oops, sorry. So let me now uh, proceed on with the following questions. So I'll just have to clear up all my drawings. And guys, I want you to look into uh, question number... Sige, tingnan natin ah. Uh, let me see if what question is this. Oops. Ah, yeah. So, guys, oh, I, I'd want you to answer four, five, and six. Ayan. So, so I'll give you, sige, let's try to finish for uh, five minutes. I'll give you five minutes to answer questions four, five, and six. So, do, to those among you who just came in, so good evening to everyone. Um, you can refer to our, to our chat box sa ating Facebook Live. Uh, please refer to the link I posted in there. Um, you might want to backtrack a bit and look into the very first message on the chat box. Uh, that's where you get to access the link. So guys, I'll give you five minutes to answer questions for five X.
Okay, so guys, I'll give you two more minutes. Okay, so guys, I hope that's enough time for you to look into questions four, five, and six. So this time around, let's answer the questions. So uh, what's your answer for question number four? Yeah, so you can type in sa ating chat yung sagot ninyo for question number four. Yeah, let's start with that. So according to L, meet the demand. Okay. Okay, so Apple says increase. Okay. Right. Uh, let, let's let's look into question four first. Number four. We'll we'll get to number five and six later. Uh, let's look into question four first. So Jem says meet the demand. How about those people sa ating uh, Zoom class meet the demand as well? So do we? Does everyone agree? It's meet the demand. Okay. All right. So yeah. So let's try to apply scanning ulit. No. So hanap tayo ng mga keywords. So if you guys look into this, you have machine production. And it says needed, no? So what is needed? And it also mentions cotton fabrics. So if you guys now look into the into the paragraphs, we'd be able to see those keywords. And you'd be able to see the word machine production here if you guys do what I'm underlining. And it also mentions needed too. So pretty much alam natin na nandito yung sagot, no? And it even mentions about cotton. If you guys look into the previous statements, um, it mentions about cotton. So we'd know that probably the answer is somewhere within this part. So if you guys read the sentence, no, the one that begins with but, it says there, but the key to the increased productivity needed to meet the demand was machine production. So clearly, the answer there, of course, is meet the demand. So you got the, the answer for question number four, correct. Okay? Now, with number five, oh, tignan naman natin yung sagot na natin for question number five. So with question five, um, I think some of you answered efficient. Yeah, so some of you answered efficient. So does everyone agree that, that it's efficient? Let's look at the Zoom. Uh, sa Zoom naman, sabi rin ni, ano, okay, Argelo, L, L uh, Christine. So Steam Engine. Okay, how about for, I don't know, for the, for, for, for question number five? Okay, so efficient. So most of you who are, who are in the Zoom class or Facebook Live now, answered efficient. So, tignan natin. So, um, I think the most important keyword or the easiest keyword to look for is the word fly shuttle. Diba? Makikita mo fly shuttle sinabi niya, no? And, um, yeah, you can probably look for improved technology then. Then you also have the word productive. So, let's see where we'd be able to see those keywords then, no? So, kung makikita nyo, sa next paragraph, it mentions fly shuttle. Right, so this gives me an idea that probably the answer could be found somewhere here, and it even mentions about okay, since it mentions about innovator, 
di ba? Kung makikita nyo dito sa paragraph sentence ito, it says mention. It mentions innovator. So we know that when we mention about in, um, innovator, isn't it that when you say innovation, alam natin technology has something to do with technology. So this gives me a hint na probably the answer would be somewhere here. Diba? Tapos sabi pa niya more. Diba? So what is more? And if you look into it, meron siyang sinabi rin about productivity. And it's somewhere here is a previous statement, no? productivity eightfold. So this gives me a sense that probably the answer would be somewhere here on this paragraph, diba? on in this portion. Diba? And if you guys look into it, sabi nga niya, uh, to help him build more efficient machinery. Diba? So here, the, the answer is clearly said, stated efficient is the answer there. No? And actually, even if you guys look into the upper portion, even mentions about the word efficient right, up, right on top. So for those among you who answered efficient, that's correct for this number five. Now for number six, let's look into uh, number six, no? So it says there, machinery begins to be powered by. So normally, guys, for uh, for the reading test, no, um, just a little tip: um, the answers to questions would normally appear in sequence. Sa ano sa sa passage, no. So alam mo, if you if you notice, no, yung sagot sa question four na una before mo makita yung number five, and same goes with number six. So th that that's how it works, no, sa sa IELTS test. Uh, it, it's normally in sequence, no, for a certain type of question. So. We, if that's the case, then probably the answer for question six would be found somewhere here. Diba? Makikita natin yan possibly dito sa bandang dulo na. No? Somewhere on the lower portion. And if you were to pick out keywords, it mentions there machinery. Diba? So sabi niya, machinery begins to be powered by. So what, what, is, the, what, what is being powered? What, the, the machine is powered by what? So that's a question. So guys, if you look into the portion here, no, so sabi niya, uh, not yet fully mechan mechanized and began to use. So it, you notice that the word began was used here. So and this this gives us a sense that it, it's somewhere there because it mentions begins. So alam natin nandito yan, no? uh, began to use steam engines for power. So sabi niya dito power. So alam natin, nakita natin kanina power din. Diba? Tapos sabi niya machinery and we know that machinery, when you say machinery, it's talking about engines. So we know that the answer for this particular question is somewhere in this paragraph or in, in this particular sentence. Diba? So guys, I, I just want to address some of the answers dito sa question number six. No? And I noticed with some of you, they answered uh, steam engine. Yeah, so some of you answered steam engine. So guys, I want you to be careful in answering questions for fill in the blanks for the reading test. No? Kasi you'd like to make sure that you don't create redundancy in your answers. Kasi if you answered steam engine, it's a bit redundant to answer steam engine. Kasi to start with, you already have the word machinery on the question. So it does sound redundant if we say machinery begins to be powered by steam engine. Diba? Parang umikot yung statement kasi the word machinery and engine, they mean the same thing. So the best answer for number six is just one word. And that happens to be what? That happens to be steam instead. Okay? So that's the answer I repeat for question number six. So I think most of you got it right. No? So the word steam is actually correct. Okay, so let's move on to a few more questions. So, so far, what we've seen are fill in the blanks types of questions where we got to apply scanning. And let's look into another type of question. Now, let's look into multiple choice. Naman, no? And the thing about multiple choice is that you'd also be able to apply scanning technique then. And for this slide I have on my screen, I want you to look into question number seven. No? So yung number eight, uh, don't, uh, wag nyo muna pansin yung number eight. Well, I, I have a separate passage for that. But just look for, just look at, question number seven first no and guys i'll give you two minutes to answer question number seven
Okay. All right. So, guys, what's your answer for this question? Is it A, B, C, or D? So, those among you attending sa ating Zoom meeting, Apple says C. Melody as well agrees at C. Roland, same goes with Anne. And those attending the Facebook Live also agreed it's a C. Diba? So, what led us into answering letter C here? So, guys, if you look into the question, no? so, punta ako sa question. Um, the, I think the most important keyword there is 800%. No? So it's, it's actually a good thing if, if a question contains numbers. Kasi like if you look into a paragraph, guys, napakadaling makita ng mga numbers. No? And I, I think that's one thing that you'd like to always look for right away. If you see a number, look for that number within the paragraph kasi it would help you it, it would be faster no to to isolate the answer if you if there are certain numbers so the number 800% if you look into the paragraph hindi mo makikita talaga yung 800% no pero makikita mo dito sinabi niya eightfold and we know in English, if we say eightfold, it's like eight times. Or in other words, 800% ang gusto niyang sabihin. And if you look for the clues, nasabi niya dito, increase productivity. And it says they're raising productivity. So the question is, which of the following innovations was, uh, was mentioned that indicated increased productivity? So basically, we'll just have to read this portion. Diba? Ano ba yung describe na... Ano dito na an, an tawag dito na invention that raised productivity 800%. And I think the answer is pretty clear. Diba? So everyone agrees that the answer here, of course, is spinning Jenny is correct then. So the answer is letter C for this number. So again, what we did is we applied the concept of scanning. Okay, so guys, let's move on to the next uh, slide. Uh, I have another passage for you for question number eight. So let me just clear up my drawings first and look into question number eight. So I'll give you another two minutes to answer question number eight. Okay, so guys, if in case you are unable to um, click on the handout, no, uh, kanina at the beginning of the class, I already shared the handout. So for those among you who just came in, yeah, you can just click on the link I posted uh, just now um, for the handout. No? So whatever I am I'm sharing here on my screen, you'll be able to access it via that link, okay? So anyway, let's look into your answers then. So those who typed in their answers at the chat box answered letter D. So does everyone agree it's a D? Uh, so uh, according to those attending sa Zoom, yeah, they agree D as well. Gail, Bakani, Arjulo, Navarro, Anafe answered D as well. Right? So does everyone agree it's letter D? So tignan natin. So... Um, if you look into the question, um, the most important keyword word there is actually the last three words. Diba? Kung nakikita niya, sabi niya dito, um, at its peak, it says. All right? Um, so what is, at, uh, what is at its peak? 
So yun yung question. So let's look for the dates. No? So meron siya sinabi 1781 to 1791. Then it mentions about 1815 until 1830. Then uh, what else did it mention? So basically may mga dates, may mga years siyang binigay. No? But what we're looking for is the peak. Diba? What was at its peak? It says, no? And I think the most important keyword there that would suggest that it was at its peak is this portion. So if you guys um, insert, uh, look into what I'm encircling right now, it says there had sword. And we know, we, we have the idea that if it says it had sword, this means that it actually went on the peak if it mentions it had sword. Diba? Yun yung idea ng had sword eh. And when did it soar? It says there by the end of the 19th century. It says there end of the 19th century. So if you're going to look into the choices, which among the four options is the closest to the end of the 19th century? And in here, ni pwedeng letter A. Masyado malayo sa end of 19th century yan. Yung B, ganun din. No? So it's, it's too far from the end of 19th century. Same goes with letter C. So yes, everyone I think got this one right. So the answer is letter D. So here it says 1900, and that's the end of the 19th century. So that's the best answer we can get for question number eight. Okay, so again, what we applied there is scanning. So, so far, guys, we were able to apply scanning through um, uh, fill in the blanks types of questions. You'd be able to apply it to such types. Then you'd also be able to apply it to a uh, well, multiple choice type, as like what we saw here. And let's move on to a few more questions. Let's look into the next part. So, guys, ito. So, um, I have a few questions for you, Dan. Let me just erase my marks here on my screen. And um, this time, let's try to apply scanning technique for true, false, not given types of questions. And in this case, I want you to look into question number 10 first. No? And the reference, of course, is the paragraph right above. So um, I'll give you two minutes, Olet, to answer it. Um, let's uh, you know try to answer number 10, true, false, or not given. So I'll get back to you after two minutes. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so guys, uh, let's answer question number 10. Yeah. So you can type in your answers via our chat box. So what is the answer for this question? So according to number 10, 
um, it says their foreign textiles were banned because of their inferior quality. Yeah, so what was the reason why the foreign textiles were banned? Yeah, so some of you answered not given. Okay, anyone else? Right, how about others? So Crazy says um, uh, true. Others would answer not given. Okay. So guys, um, when you say not given, meaning to say that the, that the passage did not mention the reason why. All right. I, I just want to clarify that. No, if we say it's not given, then possibly you might be thinking that the passage did not mention the reason why the textiles were banned. Because it's a different thing, guys, if there was a reason that was mentioned, but it wasn't because of the inferior quality. Yeah, it's a different story. I just want to differentiate the two. Um, yung not given, the passage did not mention why. But if it's a false statement, the reason was mentioned, it's just that it was a different reason. But if we answer true, then this means na sinabi talaga sa passage that it was because of inferior quality. And mind you, we cannot answer true. No, hindi, hindi pwede yung true kasi to start with, um, I, I don't see anything here that would mention anything about inferior quality. So unfortunately, we can't answer true. No, but at any rate, let's try to apply scanning technique olet. No, so tignan natin. So guys, if you look into this, it says their foreign textiles were banned. No, and I think it's pretty clear here is a statement that. So, uh, yeah. So guys, sorry those attending the Zoom meeting. Uh, can you please uh, make sure that you mute your microphone, please? Okay, so uh, so that's what's underlined. No? So they also had foreign textiles banned. And it was talking about the reason why. Why was it banned? And according to the question, it says that it, it was because of their inferior quality. So let's have we have to investigate further. So kasi, guys, if you if you if you backtrack a bit, no, kung babalikan natin yung mga previous na statement, um, according to this, sabi niya, so how were local producers to fight off the competition. So the, the question was, how did they stop competition? Diba? So what, uh, paano, nila, paano nila tinapos yung competition coming from, from you know, uh, from, from, from imported products? Diba? Yun yung reason eh. So if you're going to connect that, no, I mean, if you continue reading, sabi niya, the imported fabrics were of course expensive, so textile produced mix and cotton substitutes. And another reason is they also had foreign textiles banned. So meaning to say, the reason why it was banned was not because of the poor quality. It was because they would like to fight off the competition. So it, it go, you have to go, go back a bit the on sa previous statement for us to identify the answer for question 10 no and that happens no um in the reading test you sometimes you don't just simply depend on just one statement diba so minsan you have to refer to some neighboring sentences as well for us to make complete sense of the answer for question 10 so in this case the answer for number 10 is actually false so that's the best answer here, no? So it the, the reason was mentioned, it's just that it wasn't because of the inferior quality. It was because of something else. So it was contradicting. So therefore, we answer false for question number 10. So guys, let's move on to the next slide. So allow me to just erase my marks first. I'll just erase everything. And this time, let's focus on question number 11. Right, so I'll give you another two minutes to answer question number 11.
All right. So, guys, I hope that's enough time for you to answer question 11. So, let's look into your answers then. Right. So, tignan natin. So, um, sa ating Zoom class. Yeah. So, let's look into your answers there. So, Anifes says true. Okay. Arjula says true as well. Right. Those attending sa ating Facebook Live, Mark says true. Sandy says true. Shirley says not given. Lorraine says true. Mariana says false. Lenita De Leon says not given. So you notice iba-iba yung sagot natin no, for this question number 11. So uh, guys, once you see names of people, you, you right away consider it as a as a as a keyword no madaling mahanap no kasi yung Richard Arkwright madaling makita yung name na yan eh uh, you'd be able to find that name here so if you guys look into what i'm highlighting on the or underlining on the passage i i see Richard Arkwright there no and according to the question si Richard Arkwright uh, was the was the one who built the first fully mechanized textile mill so we have to see an evidence that they were re that he was really the person who built the first fully mechanized textile mill and according to this uh, if you guys look into the, the the this particular sentence no so sabi niya dito uh, the next great innovator was Richard Arkwright, who in 1768 employed John Kay to help him build more efficient machinery. He was a man with a vision to, man, to mechanize textile mill. So guys, if you look into this, sabi niya, mechanized textile mill, right? Uh, and by 1782, he had a network of mills across Britain. Diba? So he, he, he had a network of mills. But the question, guys, is that did, did we see anything that tell us that he was the one who built the first fully mechanized textile mill. Because we have to see that. Diba? I mean, the keywords might be similar, but the question is, is the idea the same? I mean, what we saw on that statement was that you know they, he had a vision and he had a network of mills across Britain. But the question is, the question is asking, did the passage really mention that this person was the one who built the first fully mechanized textile mill? So if you're going to compare it, we can't answer true. Yeah, but we can't answer true and we cannot even answer false because to start with if we answer false it should disprove what is written with number 11 it's just that we don't have sufficient evidence based on what we saw on the sentence we don't have sufficient evidence to say it's true or to say it's false so therefore what would be the answer the answer here is actually not given so that's the, the idea behind not given, diba? Kasi there might be some keywords which might be the same. But remember, guys, this is a test of comprehension. It, it, it assesses whether you understood the thought and you compare the thought of the statement versus what's presented on the passage then, okay? So I repeat, this is for number 11. The answer is not given. Okay, so guys, I'll have to move on to the next set. So this time you have question number 12. So let me clear up all the drawings and I'll give you another two minutes to study question number 12.
Okay, so guys, I'll give you half a minute. Ay, wabasla si Mudir mo na. All right, uh, guys, can you please un uh, mute your microphones, please? Mudir mo na. Pakimute. Oh, baska lang. Yeah. Ibga ka lang. Ibga baska pa ka. Uh, La Army, please, can you please mute your microphone? Okay. All right, so let's move on to question number 12. Yeah, so tignan natin yung sagot ninyo. So, um, according to those attending sa ating Zoom meeting, so let's look into the answers to those in sa Zoom meeting. So, Anifes has true, right? And the rest of the attendees sa ating uh, Facebook Live also said true as well for the answer. Okay. So, does everyone agree it's a true then for this question number 12? So, tignan natin. So, let's look for keywords. So, but uh, at any rate, let's look into the question first. So, it says there in less developed countries, the industry could rely on cheap labor. And let's look, pay attention to keywords. No? So, here um, it says less developed countries, right? And I can clearly see in the statement it says less developed countries. Diba? Tapos sabi, the industry could rely on cheap labor. And yung cheap labor na to, I'd be able to see it because it mentions there low wage competition. So I, I have an idea that the answer for question number 12 might be somewhere in the sentence. I'll have to read it now. So it says, economically less developed countries, on the other hand, had the advantage of being able to provide low wage competition. And that somehow is consistent with what's presented on question number 12. So in this case, for those among you who answered true, it's actually the correct answer then. Okay, so that's for number 12. And guys, let's move on to another question. So this time, let's check on question number 13. So I'll have to clear everything up first, and I'll give you another two minutes to look into question number 13. All right, so guys, I'll give you half a minute. Okay. All right. So, yes, yeah, so guys, uh, this time let's look into your answers to the question. 
Right. So Nanette says not given. How about others? Lanita says not given as well. Right. Anife, not given, not given as well for Arjulo. Okay. All right. So guys, let's look into it. No? So the, the keywords in there would be outsourcing. Yeah, that's pretty clear. Right. And possibly it says one method and compete with foreign manufacturers. And guys, if you look into it, the, the, the word outsourcing was actually mentioned. Diba? So makita nyo dito outsourcing na sabi. And when manufacturers establish factories and countries where there is cheap labor then. No? But in this case, it, it, we, we can't really connect the idea of this sentence with number 13. I mean, we're looking for something that will tell us that it's a method to compete with foreign manufacturers. But we couldn't really see anything about foreign manufacturing here in this particular paragraph, diba? So in this case, we have to go for not given then, diba? So yung part na competition with foreign in manufacturers, it wasn't mentioned. So we can't really determine whether this is true. We can't even say it's false, but we'll have to go for not given for this question number 13 then. Okay, so let's move on to the next part. So guys, there you have it, no? yung ating uh, scanning technique. So what we've covered so far would be the scanning technique. So I'll have to move on to uh, another part. And this time, let's talk about skimming. So if scanning, it's meant for looking for specifics, and we're talking about like fall or fill in the blanks, true, false, not given, or multiple choice. Um, another technique that you can apply is the concept of skimming. So what's the idea for skimming? Uh, skimming is meant for those types of questions where you are asked to come up for a general idea. Diba? So if you want to understand the paragraph and not really look for details, you just want to have a general understanding of the paragraph. So you, you apply this idea or this technique skimming. No? So what's the idea behind it? Um, skimming understands that a paragraph, a structure of a paragraph, no? if you're talking about the anatomy of a paragraph, Normally, the first sentence of the paragraph would be the main topic. That's where you get the, the main idea, no? yung topic sentence na tinatawag. And if you continue reading the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth sentences, you'd be able to see details in the form of examples, or they could be in the form of uh, what? Um, you know, elaboration, for instance. So those are the things that you'd be able to see on the second, third, fourth, and fifth. And by the end of the paragraph, the last sentence, eh, yung normally yung last sentence, that's where it gets to wrap up. No? Sinasummarize niya yung buong paragraph then. So um, this means that instead of reading the entire paragraph, if you really want to get the general idea of a certain paragraph, you have to skip the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth parts of the paragraph and focus instead on the first sentence and the last sentence of that paragraph. So that's the idea for skimming. So why am I teaching this? I am teaching this because the exam is time constrained. We cannot afford to waste time especially if you're a slow reader, you cannot afford to waste time reading the, the entire paragraph. And sometimes yung pagbabasa ng buong paragraph, it would actually um, mislead you pa nga eh. Di ba? Minsan may mga details doon sa gitna that could give you an idea na, okay, baka iba yung title niya. No? But by simply paying attention to the first and last sentences, you'd be able to have a general idea of the paragraph. Now, guys, I just want to put to set a disclaimer. Of course, may mga exceptions to the rule. May mga situations na yung main idea for the paragraph, you'd be able to find it somewhere on the second. Minsan sa gitna pa nga ng sentences. No? But my experience for the many passages that I've been conducting, I've been uh, facilitating sa ating classes, um, a, a lot of those, no, possibly 85% of the time, you'd be able to see the main idea on the first and as well as the last sentences. Okay, So that's why it's worth considering this technique. It's called skimming. So guys, let's try to apply this technique then. So I'll have to move on to the next slide. And let me erase the pencil marks all across my screen. So guys, I have a paragraph here. 
and I gave you the list of titles found on top. So I'll give you, so, yeah, so let's try to finish it, siguro mga two minutes, to look into the paragraph. And after two minutes, tell me um, what you think would be the best title or the best heading for this paragraph I have. Okay, so I'll give you two minutes. Okay. All right. So guys, now let's look into your answers then for this paragraph. So what is your answer here? Um, what letter? So give me a letter then. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'll just request those who are attending a Zoom meeting to please mute your microphones, please. Okay. All right, so those attending sa Zoom, uh, they answer letter C, right? How about others sa ating uh, Facebook Live? So L says C, Jazz says D. Yeah, Mariana says C, as, uh, C naman, okay? But most of you answer letter C. Okay, so tignan natin. So let's try to apply the skimming technique. So, apply natin yung tinuro ko kanina. So, what, what I taught you guys earlier is focus on the first sentence, this part, and as well as the last sentence then. No? So, that alone saves you a lot of time. So, basahin natin yung first sentence then. Okay, so according to the first sentence, uh, numerous studies conducted in Britain and the United States show that the country of choice depends to a large extent on economic factors. So the first sentence, if you're going to, to try to understand it, it's basically telling us that um, the, the reason why they want to study in a certain country is because of economic factors. This means that whether I afford to study in the UK or not, or whether I afford to study in the US or not, but it's a big factor for me to consider. And if you guys look into the last sentence, in the main says, students tend to follow the traditional pattern of study for their national group. So what is that last sentence telling me? Well, it tells me that if most Filipinos would want to study in the US, then there's a likelihood that I would want to study in the US as well, because most Filipinos would follow suit. Or if most Indonesians would want to study in the nearby Australia, then chances are an Indonesian student would also want to study in Australia as well. Diba? So if we're going to connect the idea with the first sentence and the last sentence, this gives us a general idea na itong paragraph na to, from our, our understanding, it talks about the reasons why students would choose a certain destination to study in. And those among you who answered letter C, is actually the correct answer then. So you notice, you get to save a lot of time. Diba? The reason why I'm sharing this to you is that you get to save a lot of time by simply focusing on the first and the last sentences of the paragraph. So it's what we call skimming. Now, let's move on to another topic uh, or another question. So this time, I have another paragraph to you for you guys. 
And I want you to look into it and try to apply skimming on it. And let's identify your answer then. Okay, I'll give you another two minutes. All right, so guys, uh, this time let's answer this number. All right, so tell me, uh, type in our on our chat box your answer for this question. So which letter is the correct one? So according to Apple, it's A, Z, S, S, A as well. Uh, those attending sa ating Zoom meeting, yes, I think everyone agrees it's letter A. Okay. So, tignan natin, no? so let's apply skimming technique ulit. So, um, if you look into the first sentence, so this is your first sentence. Okay, and of course, your last sentence is this portion. All right, so according to the first sentence, it says the U.S. attracts the most diverse array of nationalities to its English language classrooms. Now, this heterogeneity, when say heterogeneity, diversity on, being largely due to its immense pulling power as the world's foremost economy and the resulting extensive focus on U.S. culture. And if you continue with the last sentence, before furthering their English skills, students in Europe study from predominantly English material. Most Europeans offer neighboring Britain, but many Asian, Middle East, and African students decide upon the same route too. So basically, anong sinasabi nung first at saka last sentences? It simply tells us that in countries like the UK and in the America, in the US, they attract uh, diverse nationalities no, coming from different parts of the world. And you guys got it right. Uh, based on your answer, you answered letter A. That's actually the correct one then. Diba? Kasi, I, I mean, I think yung keyword already gives a clue. Diba? Yung heterogeneity, nakita natin yun kaagad sa first sentence. Eh. So there, no? so you notice we save a lot of time again by applying this technique. Okay? So let's move on to another question. So we have another question for you. And I'll give you another two minutes to read and determine the best title for the paragraph.
All right, so guys, I'll give you half a minute to uh, study the question. All right, so yeah, so let's look into your answers then. So um, according to your answers, most of you answered B as in boy, uh, Zia says D. All right, let me just go back again to the, oops, sorry, just give me one moment. I'll just have to go back there. All right, just give me one moment, guys. I'll just have to stop sharing first and go back to my presentation. Yeah, I accidentally clicked on it. Okay. Yeah, so going back to adding discussion. Yeah, okay, so uh, sorry about that, but most of you answered B, then some of you answered D as in dog. So let's look into it. No, tignan natin. So let's apply as uh, uh, a skimming technique ulit. So if you guys look into it, then we'll just focus on the first sentence and as well as the last sentence here. So the first sentence says, nor have the economic problems in Asia caused appreciable drops in full-time college and university attendances by Asian students in these I'm oh, sorry, that's a wrong passage. No, I just have to go back a lot. No, maling passage. Rion. Ito pala, sorry. So, Australia and New Zealand are often overlooked, but hundreds of thousands of international students have discovered the delights of studying in the Southern Hemisphere. So, what is it telling us? It, it talks about these two countries. Diba? So, kung titignan natin, um, it, it focused on two countries specifically, Australia and New Zealand. And if you guys look into it, it mentioned that a lot of students have discovered the delights of studying in the southern hemisphere. No, they they, they discovered the delight. No, I mean, what are the benefits basically? No, parang if you're going to look into it, this might give us a sense that this is probably all about the benefits of studying in the southern hemisphere, in particular these two countries. And if you continue reading the last passage. In addition, it says, revised entry procedures for overseas students have made it possible for an increasing number to attend class to improve their English for alternative reasons then. So guys, if you look into this, it's, it talks about those two countries. No? And it, it talks about what are the benefits of studying in these two countries. And I think this is where vocabulary is important. Um, I understand some of you answered B as in boy. No? Kasi nakita natin clearly Australia and New Zealand. No? However, uh, that's, not, that's not the best title. No? So if you answered B, unfortunately, this is wrong. Um, the answer is actually D as in dog. No? So why is it D? Kasi yung antipods, guys, it refers to the southern hemisphere. Uh, yung, yung antipods. No? And in particular, it was talking about those two countries, Australia and New Zealand. Diba? And you guys can see the first sentence, it mentions about the delights. So basically, the delights is simply a synonym for the word attractions. And therefore, the best answer for this number is letter D as in dog then. Okay, so that's it for this particular paragraph. So notice that we applied another technique. This is called, of course, uh, skimming. Okay, so guys, let's move on to the next one. So I think this is the last one for this evening, if I'm not mistaken. So let me now clear up my screen and I'll give you another uh, two minutes to study the paragraph then and figure out the answer.
Okay, so Galis, I'll give you half a minute. All right, so let's look into your answers then. Uh, so think that what is your answer for this question? Uh, yeah, you guys can type in sa ating chat box then. So let's look into those people answering sa ating Zoom meeting. So most of you answered B, others went for G. That's your answer. Okay. Yeah, Lorraine says B, Mark, B, JD says it's letter C. Although, uh, JD, I think we already have answered C earlier in one of the passages. So unfortunately, we can't go for, for letter D anymore or letter C. Diba? So na, ano siya, nasagot na kanina. So anyway, let's look into it. No? So if you guys read the first sentence and the last sentence, no, actually... It, it's not enough for you to read the first sentence. There might be some cases that your answer could be found somewhere on the second part. I mean, if you continue reading the second sentence, it says there, this is partly because there has always been greater demand right, for enrollment at Australia and New Zealand. And I think that already gives you an idea of what the answer is based upon what is presented or what is underlined. So the best answer, guys, for this number is actually letter B. Yeah, so for those among you who answered B, that's actually the correct one, okay? So there, so again, I, I just want to impart to you guys, no, it's a pretty short lecture because I, I just wanted to focus on those two. Um, I believe in the succeeding schedule for this month, uh, you'll also be taking, or you, if you would be attending, there, there are also some discussions of other lectures on true, false, not given, or on the on multiple choice types of questions. But I just want to focus on those two techniques. No, so just to recap, we started with scanning, and we mentioned that scanning is you look for specifics, and it's you can apply scanning for. Full, uh, multiple choice, true, false, not given, fill in the blanks. So the idea there is that you don't need to read the passage, but just simply look for keywords. Diba? Then this uh, next technique, which is skimming naman, the idea there is you just pay attention to the first and last sentences because normally that's where you get to have the title. And this applies to one type of question. It's called matching headings. Uh, you'd, you'd encounter these types of questions no, when you do your reading practice. So I hope this also encourages you if in case you're a non-Niner reviewee. So I hope that this encourages you to uh, enroll at Niner so we'll have more discussions on reading. We'll have more mock exams similar to this and also reading uh, skills enhancement classes. So yeah, so that's about it. No? So guys, before we end our session, I just want to briefly promote this book and you also get to have a discount on our review packages if in case veil uh, of this book then. So this is a book I authored. It's entitled Grammar Essentials, A Practical Guide to Everyday English. And it's available at Shopee for 649 pesos. Now you just simply search for our Niner, official Niner page then. So, um, well, oops, sorry. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's available at Shopee then. So you just uh, search for it. And uh, well, once you avail of it, I'll just share to you sa ating chat box yung link. And um, you, you get to have a 500 peso off discount on our review packages no? uh, once you avail of it. And of course, I also recommend it to those among you who just simply want to polish on their grammar skills. So this comes very handy. Okay. All right. So that's about it, guys. Uh, so thank you for attending. So I, I, I will just call on um, Ethel. Hi. Hi, Hello. Sir Fritz. Hello. Hello. Okay, so in Ayan. hello in behalf 
In behalf of the IFNG administrators and members, we would like to express our heartfelt gratitude for taking time to be with us and for sharing your knowledge to all our participants. Thank you so much, Sir Fritz. Ay, salamat din. So thank you guys for attending this afternoon. I understand some of you here are in the opposite side of the globe. So I appreciate your time and I hope to, uh, you know, to conduct another session with you next time. Thank you. Thank you and bye-bye po. God bless. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Okay, for those who are still here, who wants to do, uh, who wants to practice, uh, I will open the link later. Is there any questions, guys, before I leave?